Good morning and thanks for coming. Um, at 3.15 a.m. this morning, an officer was traveling southbound on Prospect Avenue Southeast, just south of Highland Street, and he observed a vehicle traveling uh, northbound without its headlights on. So as the both, both vehicles approached each other, vehicle traveling without its headlights stopped, and uh, one of the passengers in that vehicle leaned out of the window and began firing shots at the uh, Grand Rapids police officer. Grand Rapids police officer fired one shot uh, in return through the windshield of his vehicle and the offending vehicle fled the area. Uh, another Grand Rapids police officer spotted that car, engaged it in a lengthy traffic pursuit. Pursuit ended in the area of uh, Paul and Eastern where the individuals exited the car and um, foot pursuit and a canine tracking took place and the Grand Rapids police officers were able to apprehend one suspect who is in custody at this time. And this is all preliminary in invest investigation, preliminary information, and uh, investigation continues. But happy to answer any questions if I can at this time. I see you did you release the uh, dash cam and the uh, body cam video. The answer to the body camera video is uh, we know, well, I should say too that the Michigan State Police are investigating the uh, officer involved shooting, but um, in this case, we're also investigating the criminal activity of the individuals firing at the officers. So we have already obtained the body worn camera video because the um, incident took place while the officer was seated in the vehicle. Uh, I don't believe that there's any investigatory information on that body worn camera. Now, the in car camera is a, is a different question. And that vehicle has been recovered. And because it was parked for such a long time after this incident with the, the video running, the video actually hasn't downloaded as of this time. So it'll probably be another 45 minutes or so before we e even have access to that video. When we do see that video, what I'll do is I'll talk to the prosecutor's office and I'll talk to the Michigan State Police, see if they have any objection to us releasing it. And assuming they don't, um, release it as soon as I possibly can, as early, let's say Monday would be my uh, preference. It may seem obvious, but it appears that these suspects were targeting police. And that it would seem that way. It was a marked patrol car. However, because this is preliminary information, it, that may not be the case. So I think hopefully the investigation will, will determine if they were targeting the police or not. Apprehended one suspect? Are there others at large? There were, uh, my understanding is there were at least, at least three individuals in the vehicle. So there's at least two other individuals who are, who are still at large. That is correct. Do you, do you believe them to be a threat to the surrounding communities? As of this time, I don't think uh, they're they're a threat. I think in general, people with that type of behavior that show that sort of disregard for um, human life are absolutely a threat. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, but uh, I'm pretty confident that our investigation will uh, determine who these individuals are, and we will bring them to just justice. And is there an ongoing search currently for them? There is. Okay. Yes, so that is they correct. So the car at Eastern and Holland. That is correct. So they, uh, after the lengthy vehicle pursuit, they um, stopped at Eastern Hall. Everyone exited the vehicle and they ran. And so far with the ones that subject that you had, no injuries? No injuries to any parties involved, thankfully. Were any other houses or other cars hit? I believe that there were at least two other vehicles that were hit by gunfire from the uh, offenders, not from the officer. How many shots did you Numerous shots. I was on the scene this morning. I, I counted myself at least four shell casings, but I think there were probably more determined uh, by the time I left. But the uh, Michigan State Police were going to do the full uh, investigation there. So not possible. You know, there's a short gun, long gun. Like I believe it was a handgun. Yeah. Uh, you said one person looked out the window and, uh, and opened fire. Was it the driver, the passenger? That I don't know. And uh, because it's all preliminary, if there ended up being two shooters, I wouldn't be terribly surprised. But my understanding right now is that there was one uh, passenger that leaned out the window. Do we have any idea of ages or any more information on The individual that's in custody is a teenager, but I don't have, have an age and I don't have an age of the other individuals that were with him. How disappointing is that that it's a teenager that's involved in something like that? Yeah, incredibly disappointing. Yeah. Agreed. Can you talk about the route of the traffic pursuit as well? Did it go from right from Highland and Prospect, or did they go throughout the city? It went. It was actually lengthy. I think it, it went for several miles. At one point in time, they were on the highway, so it was actually quite a, a long pursuit. It just happened to to end close to where it began. Did they go through the west side of town as well? That's a, that's a great question. I don't have the route though. How do you yeah. decipher how long to chase? You know, something. I know sometimes you guys decide. 
it's a danger mm -hmm. to sure. chase and there could be other people involved. In this yeah. case, you kept going. Yeah, so, so uh, it's a balancing test. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you what that balancing test is, is uh, the traffic, the weather, uh, the danger to others. Um, at that time in the morning, there's nobody else on the road. It was a dry night. Uh, there were no pedestrians. There's no school kids going. And then you have to weigh how serious the crime is. And in this case, attempted murder of a police officer is a very serious crime. So I think that it was a, a pursuit that was well within policy. Chief, your, your officers fired back at the suspects? That's correct. The officer that, fired. I'm sorry, was that at the car or uh, during the uh, pursuit? At the initial time, it was uh, in the car. So the officer who was in the vehicle that was being fired at fired one round through his windshield at the offenders. And that was the only shot fired by a Grand Rapids police officer or any police officer. Chief, you said that you found shell casings. Were they all of the same caliber? It looked like it for me, but uh, I didn't do, uh, you know, 38s and 9 millimeters and 10 millimeters. They're all kind of pretty similar. So I didn't, on first appearance, they looked like the same caliber. Yes. So it was like it was from yeah, if I had to, to guess right now, I would say it was one gun. Yeah. Anything you can tell us about why the team did this? Did I don't know, but uh, but I will say, so it was a black Cadillac was the offending vehicle, and it was a stolen vehicle. And what we've seen lately is uh, increases stolen vehicles uh, in the area. We, I've talked at length about Kias and Hyundais, which are apparently very easy to steal. And uh, oftentimes we see a stolen vehicle then used in uh, a bigger crime. And whether they were targeting police officers or not, they're driving around with most likely an illegally possessed handgun, and they're willing to do this sort of crime. So it's a, a very dangerous situation that, um, you know, these stolen vehicles, it's, it's a bigger problem than just auto theft. Did you guys find anything else in the vehicle? I was not there when uh, the vehicle was processed. I know the vehicle was brought here. I don't know if it was towed. Uh, it, actually, I saw it being put on a flatbed, so I know it was towed. I don't know if it's been processed yet. Chief, there's been some speculation uh, that there may be some reluctance on your officers since the shooter decision came down. Yeah. That was a huge concern of mine, and it was a concern, you know, uh, I think this uh, a woman named Heather McDonald coined the term Ferguson effect. And, it, and you see, after uh, Michael Brown incident in Ferguson, a lot of police activity across the country dropped and violent crime raised up. And you see the same thing after the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis, um, just record levels of violent crime in a lot of major urban areas throughout the country. So after April 4th, that was a serious concern of mine that there would be sort of this deep policing which took place in Grand Rapids as officers kind of took a step back and uh, weren't as proactive. But I say the officers here, they're, they're true, to the, true to their oath. They're really fulfilling their duties to the best of their abilities. And as I mentioned at the public safety hearing the other day, they have uh, recovered a record number of guns. I think we're on pace with, with last year. So they're out there, they're doing the work. Um, they're targeting uh, the work that they're doing is looking to target violent criminals to take illegal guns off the street. And they're actually doing a fantastic job. And under very difficult circumstances, under a lot of scrutiny, they're doing great. Let me ask you another way. Do you think some of the offenders are trying to take advantage of yeah, yeah, I do. I think that any time in a in a, a, a super high profile incident uh, like Patrick Leoya in um, in any jurisdiction across the country, I think that um, the criminal element gets emboldened because they think that the police will take a step back and they think that they are less likely to be held accountable. So uh, we need to. It's it's our job to make sure that uh, criminals know in Grand Rapids that we are doing our job and they will be held accountable. Local. What the, but you know what? Ed, that's I do not know his identity, and I don't not, do not know where he's from. I know I know he's a teenager. Yeah, that's all I know at this time. Any feel for the age range of all those involved? I mean, I believe the offender. I believe the offender in custody is eighteen years old, if not nineteen years old. The officer in the vehicle was he had a partner with him or was he solo? He was so this officer was working uh, was working solo and I know I've talked at length um, with, with many of you about uh, after the Patrick Leoya incident that we doubled up most of our officers. Um, I know this is this is a little bit different. This uh, and I want to clarify this was not a traffic stop. This was an officer who was just monitoring the area. He was doing some follow up work and he was just fired upon by, by this vehicle. So it was not a traffic stop situation. It wasn't a use of force situation. It was just he began uh, getting fired upon. Can you talk to the officer? How are they? Yeah, I had. So uh, by the time I got here, the officer had, had left um, and I'm going to let the officer get some rest, but I'll give him a call tonight and check. Is, is the 
Is he going to be on administrative leave since he did fire his weapon? He's going to be on what we'll call crit critical incident leave because he fired his, his weapon. Yeah, he won't be back on the street until we get to, uh, you know, we'll have him back in here to make an official statement to the department. We'll make sure that uh, if he needs to get any, uh, you know, mental health services that, that he's entitled to. Super, super stressful uh, to be in an officer involved shooting to fire a gun and to be shot at is uh, is extremely traumatizing. So it's uh, I definitely care about uh, making sure that he gets treated right through this process. Can you ask while you're up there yeah. on another subject? Sure. Uh, the Supreme Court has overturned Rule Three Wade. Does GRPD put any additional uh, security on either uh, abortion clinics or, or possibly uh, some pro life? Uh, centers like well, I, I'll tell you what we've done, and that's what we, we've, uh, because we knew this was coming on the horizon, we've met with uh, our city's emergency management coordinator, we've had meetings citywide, and just said, what does this look like? So um, I won't say that we have extra resources on it, but we are fully prepared, as you know, that we've, uh, we're very good at handling protests. We've got, had a lot of experience over the past couple of years and a significant amount of experience over the past two or so months. So we'll be ready and we'll provide everybody that, that wants to get out there and uh, be heard a safe environment to do so. Not each other the protests and the streets and that, but uh, yeah. the clinics have also had people you know, sure. incursions and that sort of thing at the individual. I see what you're saying, yeah. And that's on our radar as well. And and uh, as well, communicating with our federal partners who we have an, an excellent rela relationship with as well in cooperation. So it's on our radar, I will say. This seems to come with it and the violence, uptick in violence in the city. Can you talk about that, Chief? And are you expecting more of this to, to keep coming? Well, I, I certainly wouldn't expect more to keep coming, and I hope uh, that, that it doesn't keep coming. You know, what I mentioned the other day is that there's some uh, research by the National Institute of Justice which said that the you know, level of punishment uh, isn't really a good deterrence, but the certainty of getting caught is. And what I want to convey here, you know, I believe we've had 11 murders since April 4th in this city. And uh, what we really want to, to make known is that if you commit a violent crime here, you will be caught and you will be brought to justice. Now, I've said before, the police aren't the only the, the piece of, of the puzzle. We're not the only solution. And I know dealing with our partners throughout the community. I spent the afternoon yesterday at a, a basketball league down in Martin Luther King Park. And I was invited there really because they were worried about the, the uptick in violence and they wanted a police presence. But what I saw there is just a group of Grand Rapids adults who care about kids looking for the opportunity to give these young kids a safe, fun environment away from, from that lifestyle. And if we get you know more adults in our community stand up and be that sort of role model, uh, I think that sort of cooperation is what we really need. Do you have a message for the, the other end of this, the judicial end? Uh, do you have a problem with where the courts are? And in these cases, they had they they've had it kind of tough coming out of COVID because there was a strong push not to incarcerate people and uh, you know not not to hold people on bond not to so they're still kind of finding their way. Um, I'm new to the area here. I uh, I don't have any criticism for the Kent County court system, and I know that uh, if these offenders do end up being juveniles, I've talked to uh, Prosecutor Becker uh, previously about juvenile offenders, and he's looking for ways because sometimes. Uh, you know, housing people in the system isn't the right way. He wants to do the right thing. So just be open-minded and uh, look to make sure we're holding the individuals account accountable and doing the right thing for them to make sure that this isn't the lifestyle that they choose moving forward. Appreciate you guys. Any other Roe v. Wade questions? I thought it was going to be all Roe v. Wade questions. So, Brandon, oh. do you have anything for us? Yeah. You want to say before we before we end here? I don't have much to say. The chief covered the preliminary information. Uh, the Office of Oversight and Public Accountability will do our jobs. We'll ensure that there's accountability and transparency in the process by monitoring it. Uh, we always uh, believe in, in seeking justice, um, and, and that's what we'll make sure happens to the extent we have the ability to do that. Um, and you know, our violence is, is never the answer. Our hearts and prayers and thoughts also go out to the officer in this incident. Uh, and it's our, our, our hope, my hope, my prayer that he's all right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.